Okay, so how am I going to disassemble this? Well, first of all, I'm going to mark uh, my lines, and they're going to be fully extended, which is idle and choke off. That means the uh, springs are relaxed, choke springs relaxed, uh, idle springs relaxed, and uh, we'll uh, do that. So. I think I can just take the plate off and fold it to the side, uh, you know, disconnect the springs as I remove the plate. So let me do that first. And I'm going to use metric hardware because it's a Kawasaki. Okay, I'm going to cut off the gas and I'm going to disconnect my fuel line. And this is a vacuum line or something it just disappears I don't even see it connected to the engine it disappears up front somewhere and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect these lines and uh, move them out of the way uh, it, there's a little bit of gas in here I'll try and catch that and we'll see what happens here that's out of the way that's out of the way Oh, not too bad, just a few drops. But I'll keep it up. So, nothing else will leak out. All right. Okay, looks like 310. Got a nut and a bolt. bolts in a nut freeze it up okay now undo, I'll undo the springs and do the uh, clutch springs and it just since it just folds out of the way I think that's all I'm gonna touch don't need to handle the cables or anything I think I'll take the uh, where's my camera at I think I'll take the uh, air cleaner off probably just remove the hose I mean the air cleaner just it just pops right out no big deal do that next alright that looks like uh, seven millimeter alright get that off the top one's done by hand it's just uh, like a butterfly valve uh, butterfly valve boy I'm I'm still living in the past when I used to work on valves. This uh, wing nut here just unscrews and we can uh, pop this off. So there's the filter. And now we can look down the carburetor. And all I see is a uh, drop of gasoline. So nothing so far. Okay, so I do see a spring I need to disconnect right here how the throttle is linked with the butterfly I, the butterfly boy, I'm just not speaking well So I have rpm control uh, Rod that I need to disconnect it's connected into the engine, you know to help keep it from over revving so I'll just uh, disconnect the uh, spring and the rod there so the way that works is it just pops right off and out oh I see so the spring is connected to the release so the rod just came right out it just sticks in there at a 90 it's not even a Z uh, it's held in place by the pin that the spring is connected to so I'll disconnect the spring too 
All right, that was pretty easy. It just lifts, lifts up out of the way. And I can set that aside. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, right here it looks like we have a PVC hose. So I'll disconnect the uh, PVC hose. Next is the stop solenoid. I'll disconnect the electrical. It just unplugs. It's basically a continuous loop. This green wire here goes into the plug, into the solenoid, and then to uh, ground here. So, take the nut off. The ground wire, there's no washers. And carburetor's free. Very interesting. Pretty nice and simple and easy. I like that. Now there are some flats on this solenoid valve, so <clears throat> I have to get one of my flat blade screwed uh, wrenches in there. Okay, I have various uh, extremely flat blade wrenches that I have left over from doing uh, furniture and uh, so they're they're different size it looks like that one will work I don't know where I got that from that might work so use that one so it says 12.8 millimeters so half inch or uh, 12 13 millimeters something like that All right, so the way this solenoid works, so it has nothing to do with the float. <laughs> I thought the pin would push the float up or let it go down. Um, pushing it up closes, pushes the pin up against the fuel line, inlet line, and closes it off. But it works in the jet, so it'll it'll plug the main jet. So that's how that works. And it's also the bowl nut, which the bowl looks pretty clean. I'll wipe that out. So basically I'm just going to clean the carburetor, make sure all of the, uh, make sure there's nothing in the ports. I do see a factory mark on the bowl here. I don't think I did that. I don't remember doing it. So anyhow, I'll make sure that lines up. I wiped out the bowl. I didn't spray it. Just kind of wiped it out. And the gasket looks just a little smushed. But I'm going to let it go. Just clean it up. Wipe it off. All right. Well, this is not going to be a fun video. I apologize right now. All I'm going to do is clean it up. I'm not going to take the jets out. I've tested it. Everything seems to be working. So I'm just going to clean it up and uh, see if that takes care of everything. I'm not going to pull the uh, uh, main jet. I'm not going to pull the idle jet. I'm just going to make sure everything's clear. There. And uh, put it back together. So the main thing is the uh, float bolt pin is like driven in there and I didn't want to punch it out. And uh, I didn't want to deal with unscrewing and screwing the uh, main jet in. So all I did was uh, spray it off, make sure everything's clean. Get all the dirt out there. I got 99% of it. Just make sure everything's clean. All the ports respond when I put air through them. And then I'll reassemble it because the engine only has 40 hours on it. So I'm thinking maybe just a little bit of dirt got in there. So this is a Walbro and it is a 26B uh, Mexico 717 and 40985. So if I replace it I get a Walbro 26B. So that's what I'll do and then I'll call up Terrell or maybe Steve and see if they'll do a overhaul on this carburetor and uh, put it on YouTube or something. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, again, I apologize that I didn't drive the pin out, take the float off, pipe clean or wire clean all the jets, you know, and I just, I just made sure everything was clear. Um, took out all the dirt, made sure there was no little pieces of debris in there, and now I'm going to reassemble it. Alright, well I did notice a little washer on there, I'm glad it stuck on, I didn't even notice it. Uh, make sure that doesn't come off and disappear. Okay, so I have my mark lined up. I know it's almost faded from the carburetor cleaner, but, you know, I took a picture before I took it apart, so I know this is where it goes, and if you rewind, you'll see it in the video. I'm going to remark it and put it back together. All right, I'm going to pretend I'm at the factory here. How about that? All right, again, I apologize for not showing you how to completely disassemble and reassemble the carburetor. I'm just not going to do it right now. Also, I'm in the habit of just replacing carburetors with OEM. So I just had a mid-range uh, rough idle issue. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't even wide open. It ran smooth. Idle, it ran smooth. But that mid-range, it would like pop and miss a little bit. So if it keeps on doing that, I'm going to uh, make sure that oh, I already checked the valves. No, the valves are fine. So anyway, uh, I'll move on to something else if uh, that keeps up, but I kind of doubt it. I'm willing to bet I, I just uh, took care of it by cleaning it. Engine has 40 hours on it. It's relatively new. Uh, I have one filter change. There's a new filter on there. So... Okay, I don't see any issues. This came off, but it's easy enough to figure out how it went on. Um, you can see that it's it's cut out. That is going to go towards the engine. And then the carburetor has the already gasket on there. I didn't take it off. And then the intake on this side. Make sure that's all together I'll put in the I call it a PVC line put that on yeah that just pushed on and now everything's held on there we'll just put it all back together hook up my electrical the solenoid here. Oh, <laughs> why is that loose? Put that on. Let's see, this came off of this lever here, so I'll put that on. So I'll orient this correctly. And then I'll put the uh, spring on and then the lever in. Yes, I'm having a lot of fun. Okay, that went in fairly easy. Put this guy in and then we'll clip it. Fun stuff. Get it all lined up. Push it on. Took me a while. Yeah, you have to get it all flush in there and assembled spring on and then and then push it on to to hold it in place all right we'll keep on going all right we'll put the throttle plate on it's pretty easy too because i need to close the uh throttle see it can it can be up and in the way so i close the throttle choke i'm sorry close the choke and then you can see where nuts and bolts go. So our nut will go here. 
hold that on we'll start the bolts and that's a little trick is you want to start them all because here look let's say say I put this on and tighten these two bolts down you can see that's not aligned so now you got these tight and it's not aligned so what you want to do is uh, always start all your bolts first of course now I can't get it in there and then tighten them down or torque them down whatever they're required and that way you know everything's in its place and aligned. Put the spring on here onto the choke. If I can get it, there we go. The uh, spring goes on a little notch in there. And I didn't disconnect any of these, so that's all good. Don't have to worry about that. Then I'll tighten my bolts up. double check behind there all right we'll get the fuel line on and the vacuum line on put the clamp in its place let's see I think I had it like this I think I just captured one, the fuel line put these clamps on access it in the future. Alright, we'll get the air filter in and make sure all my bolts are tight. Alright, I need to tell you something funny. I have my 7 millimeter sitting out here and I didn't know where it goes. I thought, what did I tighten with that? What did I loosen up with that? I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> it's the uh, intake. <laughs> seven millimeter there because this is a butterfly I don't need a tool so anyway that was fun figuring that one out get this guy back on uh, there's a little spot on the carburetor so it just goes on right there so the next thing is put it in a convenient location I think That's just a couple of cuttings, maybe an hour of mowing at the most. I mean, it's a brand new filter. <laughs> together now fire it up see if I fixed it or did nothing all right got the cover back on we're all reassembled tightened up see if it starts uh, cold engine ah! no it's cold and uh, see how it goes
All right, well, I definitely got rid of the uh, mid-range issue. Uh, so it's probably just a little bit of dirt in there, just some extremely minor dirt. But I got a little peek at the carburetor. Uh, that's what I do. I get familiar with my equipment over time. And hopefully I don't need the shop to uh, fix things for me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I'm sorry I didn't completely disassemble the carburetor. Uh, but it really didn't need to be disassembled. So that, as they say, is that. Thank you for watching.